we want to knock people on their asses, then we've got to give them a show. I'm talking like a stadium show in the clubs. The fans, they're dying for some anarchy. I work for Electra Records. You guys like a record deal? background with jackass and all this why was this the perfect story for you to tell now it, this story uh like so i didn't grow up i i love i like miley crew just fine but sure. i wasn't a super fan oh okay it was reading the book and uh me going through jackass and going through all that we went through i just connected to that the good and the bad of it, like the, sure. the drama and the addiction, the, all of it. I, we went through all of that. And I felt, man, I can tell this story. I, I've been through this, right? Yeah. And, uh, and I wanted this story to be told with just authenticity and told right, getting the era right. Like, you know, I'm an 80s kid. I, I grew up in this. Uh, and I don't want to see it made fun of. And yeah, I wanted to treat it with the respect. I wanted it to feel real. Well, yeah, there's a humor here, but it doesn't it doesn't go over the top. It feels like a part of their lifestyle, right? And that that's it. Was that always in the script, or did you guys work with that? Well, it was. I mean, like the script I inherited had a lot of that worked into it, but we we constantly added that, and the actors brought that all just evolved in time. But but to me, you know, this movie, I knew right away getting into this movie, like. It can so easily look like parody and satire with yeah. you know the big wigs and that era is so like extreme you know and that I wanted to make sure that it, it felt real and it didn't feel like a big Halloween party and that we're making fun of this era because it looks very different than now right yeah I <laughs> know so like, well that's also like I think you guys tackle a lot of obviously very intense stuff that right. happened to this band they, they, you don't pull punches on here. What, now, was how was the band working with you, what, and how much did you cooperate with them? Well, they basically, you know, said we want to make a movie. This, this is here's the book. Mm -hmm. Let's make this movie. And so it was up to me to figure out. All right, we, they they did not get involved in what stories I can tell, what stories I can't tell. Like they wanted it to be warts and all. That's how they wrote oh. the book. They put that book out, knowing this is it. Like we're we're letting it all go, and we're not proud of all this. this some of this is really intense, and uh, so. That was my goal making the movie, and they—they they honestly, once I once they trusted me to do it, they left me alone and gave me the space to do it. So it, you know, it was a real—I took that responsibility serious, uh, but they did not ever get in my way on it. That's amazing. That's amazing. Now with the cast, you, this is really well cast. This was really. Uh, Thank you. You have. How did you find these guys, and what was the? It seems like it must have been an impossible task. It was. It was. It was difficult finding the right guys because for me too, I wanted these up and coming guys that you don't see a familiar face in a wig. That would also feel like satire to me. So we had to find the right guys that just uh, were the right age, that had the right physical attribute. They had to look enough like the guys. But mm. um, so the first guy we found was uh, Douglas Booth. Uh, Luckily, he had done it. I'd seen him play a young boy George, which doesn't yeah. tell you he can play Nikki, but it did show me he can become. He is a chameleon mm. and truly commits and became. You know, so I, I when he when I got his audition, I he auditioned for Tommy Lee, and I saw it. I'm like, oh, I think he, I think he's a Nikki man. I, I asked him to read for Nikki, uh, and then we got Colson Baker's Machine Gun Kelly's audition. I'm like, well, you just our Tommy Lee, so you don't have to pretend. And then I get what I always wanted, a real musician, a real rock star, to be one of the guys to influence it in the right direction, make sure that it was keeping it authentic, and he was that guy. Uh, you and obviously, if anyone from Game of Thrones, as soon as I heard his name being interested at all, I'm like, give him that role. I'm scared <laughs> to death of him. Give him that role. Uh, and, then, and then we luckily finally found our Vince in uh, Daniel Weber, and that was, I'd seen a bunch of his material and it didn't look like Vince to me, but when he came in the room and he just had that cocky, he's perfect. And so I, we've got our guys. Now I just gotta lose their stupid accents. <laughs> well, it seems like they just connected really quickly. Too. They did, like they, the guys all committed and, and, and we were also in New Orleans uh, for long enough, all just together where we didn't know anyone else. So we're all together and I put them through a real rigorous band camp and they, got, they just became the guys. I know it's not gonna be easy. But I believe in you guys. Win it all or lose it all. 
We are mommy.